right, so I'm in the very first spot of the day, and I am going to be fishing for small fish in this particular spot, and then I'll target bigger fish a little bit later in today's episode. Let me get these lines out, and I'll break down the actual spot and why I'm parked here. All my rigs in this spot are a typical Carolina rig. I've got my braided main line down to a sinker slide. Just a, I think that's about a three or four ounce sinker there. A bumper to protect the knot. Any swivel will do. And this is just a 30 pound leader. Small hooks, small baits at this spot. Now you may be wondering, why would a guy who wants to get a bunch of views on a catfishing video be targeting small fish intentionally? And the answer is because small catfish are delicious. Right now I'm more concerned about catfish to eat than I am views on this video. But I am going to go ahead and put out one big bait just because I can't resist. And you never know, there could be a big one cruising by. All right, so the first real tip of today's video is that fresh bait is almost always the best bait. So I started off the morning throwing the cast net, and I got so many shad in one throw that it took me about 20 minutes to clean up the mess. So there's a bunch of dead ones in there, but most importantly, there's a bunch of big lively ones in there, and I'll be using, I'll be using shad most of the day. I do have some frozen skipjack with me. I got one skipjack head out there right now, but let's break down this spot. Basically, I'm going to be fishing old school all day today. Really no, no use of electronics, just scanning spots to find the conditions that I think I want. So what we've got here is there's a rock wall up there and on the downstream side of the rock wall, I've got some deep water. Not all of that is deep, but part of it is in the, in the upper thirties to forties. Where I'm sitting is only a couple of feet deep and it's a sandbar. As you can see, the bank transitions from mud to sand and up there from rock to mud. So we got variety, right? Same thing here. We've got rock falling off to sand into a deep mud hole. Over there, it's basically a mud bank with some wood cover and a little bit of rock on it. Very in depths all the way across here and my lines happen to be uh, here probably uh, maybe about nine feet because it's swept over onto the sandbar and then deeper and deeper and deeper. Um, that one didn't really stay where it was supposed to, but the point is variety. That's what I look for in a fishing spot. Tip number two, don't waste time. I sat at spot number one for probably 20 minutes and never got a bite. In my book, that was about five minutes too long. See, catfishing is not a game of patience. It's a game of getting your butt in the right spot at the right time. And that's it. Now you may be wondering, how is this spot different from the last? Well, for the most part, it's not all that different. I'm just on the other side of the river. There's the sandbar where I was sitting. There's the waterfall, varying depths all the way down through here. My lines are mostly shallow, less than 10 feet. Here's the only real difference. I've got a little ditch running in. Sometimes, Sources of new water coming into your river or lake uh, can attract bait. Sometimes there could be bait coming out of water sources like that. So potentially there could be fish holding right below where that water hits this water. I don't know. I'm beating my pop dart and I got a fish. About to get another one but i was going to tell you of the six catfish species that i have caught the channel catfish happens to be my least favorite uh probably just because they're my least favorite to eat but anyway i thought i'd take a second and talk about how to handle a catfish for those of you who are really new to this you could stick your thumb in your mouth in their mouth kind of like you do a bass but that's a good way to drop them and it's a good way to lose some skin off your thumb if you're going to grip the body of the catfish i strongly recommend you have your your, your hand in front of this top fin right here. I strongly recommend that your thumb and your finger, your other fingers, be behind these pectoral fins. There's a lot of bone right here. There's a really 
there's a really good bone structure right here under the underneath these fingers and it makes a really good reliable way to control this fish a lot of people think that catfish sting they don't never in any circumstance does a freshwater catfish will not sting you it will poke you it will stab you but it's not a sting it's just that you know, the pectoral fin the top fin can be sharp and when they're flopping around it can poke in your skin and it hurts it hurts bad in fact the back side of these on the smaller catfish can be kind of barbed like a like a steak knife but they don't sting you don't believe it. it's not true you don't have to do weird you don't have to pee on it and do all these other weird things you don't have to rub the the slime on on the wound uh, it's just a stab is all it is you know uh, roll around you'll be fine that's the truth Check that out, it's going to be delicious. I don't know why exactly it is, but I find that these, these blues with the smallest mouth and the largest belly, they tend to taste the best. Uh, anytime I come across a, uh, a blue cat with a great big old wide mouth on it and kind of a skinny body, not good eating. This is the way I like them right here. I'll be keeping this one. Look at that. Another perfect little blue cat. I'm going to keep it. Alright y'all, in this spot, it's more of the same and completely different all at the same time. There's far less current here. I mean, just hardly any water moving at all in comparison to the last spot that I was sitting at. However, it's not still water. There is a gentle reverse running right behind the boat reverse meaning that this water that's right behind the boat is going in the opposite direction of the main current i've got this line only in a couple of feet of water probably out in about 10 to 12 feet there about the same there this one's out in the in the 20s i'd say and there is some really deep water just outside of casting distance out there there's a rock dike out there and there's some 60 foot deep water. Uh, you can see some rocks up there. There's a little bit of cover in this hole. This is definitely the type of spot that's always worth trying, but at the same time, I don't hang out in spots like this very long. The water's a little bit too slow for my liking to spend very much time here. Usually I'll pull into a spot like this, put out my lines, give it maybe 10 minutes, and then move on. I've had two bites already uh, just in the time it took me to get four rods out. So we'll see what happens. Well, in the time it took me to put the top out, we got a bite right there. Actually, we've got two bites going, but I think we got a fish on rod number three here. There we go, there's a little bit bigger fish. Hopefully they'll just keep going up from there, but we'll see. Look at that, y'all. Now that's a solid bite. We got a drag taker right there. Let's see if I can get this camera put down. Definitely a bigger fish here. I'm not saying it's huge, but it's definitely bigger than what I've been messing with so far this morning and just on a little bitty bait a little bitty hook <laughs> this fish got into both towers <laughs> what a mess this fish got into both talons 
and the prop. Woo, but I did find it on one of the lightest rods I've got out. One of the lightest rods I own for catfishing, actually. That's sometimes that's, that's what makes it fun, though, is the struggle, right? It's a good fish. That just kind of goes to show you that you don't have to run big hooks and great big monster hunks of bait in order to catch nice fish. I mean, check this out. This is an old eagle claw. Straighten up that camera here. Get my act together. An old Teflon coated eagle claw. I'm sure they don't even make it anymore. Little three aught, man. More than enough hook. This fish is probably around 40 pounds. And we gotta find out though, cause I've gotta tag it for the state of Mississippi. So I'm gonna measure it. Call it 46 inches. Tags in it real quick. All right, y'all, just like that, we've come out and we've targeted, located, and caught some nice catfish today, some to eat and some to release. This one's been tagged for the state of Mississippi, and hopefully I'll get some recatch data on it in the future. Woo. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If so, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss future uploads. Thanks for watching.